Hey everyone, welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast, episode 49. My name is Doug and I am coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico. This is where I live and this is where I dye my yarn. And yeah, Zia Wools, if you haven't guessed or if you don't know already. And this is a podcast where I talk about all the fiber arts that I am currently into, which is mostly knitting, sometimes crochet and sometimes spinning and with the occasional detour with punch needle or rug hooking. Okay, it's been a while and if you follow this podcast, you may have noticed that there was a gap, uh, which is not usually the case between uh, the German edition of this podcast, yes, I'm German, and the English one, because I did something very stupid. No, I did not drop my phone into the toilet and I did not have anything other happen that you may or may not guess but well actually i don't know <laughs> but what happened was that two days ago while i was working in the dye kitchen in my studio i poured boiling water over my foot <sighs> yes <laughs> trust me i will live it's fine <laughs> but uh, what happened was that I drained some hot wa water and I, as I moved the pan back, some water sloshed over the edge and I had this seesaw effect and so, yeah, that's, it is what it is. I can't change it. I wish I had paid better attention. I was wearing Birkenstocks and knitted socks and so I thought initially, ah, oh, I don't feel too much. Then I did feel more and I kicked my shoe. I kicked, uh, I ripped off the sock and when I ripped off the sock, I, I it wasn't just the sock that came off. I don't wanna go into detail, you don't need to know, trust me. <laughs> but um, I was not a very happy person the next two days after this, so you would not have wanted me to talk to you, so let's just put it that way, but. Hey, we, I mean, this is the thing we love to do. We love to knit. We love to work with our fibers and our yarns. And so I'm thinking this will cheer me up today. So I know there are some folks out there who watch both the German and the English podcast, and you will see there was some progress in some of the projects that, um, yeah, that has happened just in the past two, three days, two and a half days. I want to start with what I have finished and one of the things I finished was of course the sweater for my son. I wove in the ends. I did not shorten the sweater. I, what I did was, it's kind of funny because I wove in all the ends except for the very last one because I thought, hmm, well, I'm just gonna leave it this way. And if he says he'd like it shorter, then at least I don't need to open that very last end. And when I gave him the sweater, I drove down to his house. We were meeting up at his place and he, uh, and he, uh, I brought my little sewing kit and he said, no, mom, this is totally fine. I don't want you to, to change anything about it. This is a handmade sweater. This is very special. It's great the way it is. And so this is where we left it, including that end that was hanging off the bottom. What the heck? I completely spaced out and forgot. I asked him whether he wore it already. And he has, so I don't know what he did, if he just didn't care or if he thought, if he tucked it in, no idea. Well, I keep, I have to remind him to bring it by because I mean, how long does it take to weave in one end? So it's fine. He likes it, that's what matters. And the other thing, as you can see, is my Harmonized Shawl by Romy Hill. 
it. I finished it a few days. Um, actually, I finished it the day before I recorded the German podcast three days ago. And uh, I, it was kind of cool because I recorded a day later and I realized all of a sudden, wait, I can finish this. I'm So I washed it and I usually spin it dry in my washing machine. I have a front loader which has a separate drain and spin setting. So I then it, it's really very nice to do that because then it's really just barely moist and it really can dry overnight. I blocked it overnight and was so happy to have it done the next day. And I will take off my microphone to show it to you in all its glory. Okay, like I said, this is the Harmonized Shawl by Romy Hill. I showed it to you while I was working on it uh, at the last in the last episode, but I worked a lot on this, almost monogamously, because I enjoyed this so very much. You may recall that I was so excited about it last time already, and um, I think what I liked especially was how the colors played together. The, uh, the, the, the color choice was actually one that a friend of mine made. Sorry about the break. I just had to sneeze about 10 times. Whoops. So back to this. A friend of mine bought this color combination at the studio tour last fall. And it's so funny because you know we have our go-to colors and I think I'm always gravitating towards a turquoise like this but to combine it with this green was just really something that I thought very unexpected and very pleasing in the combination of the two skeins together and so uh, I decided I have to make something with it. I picked the pattern for the two colors and I'm talking about this green, which is called Farmstead. The name comes from uh, the cardigan, the Farmstead cardigan, which I made a few years ago in a green that I wanted, that I developed specifically for the cardigan. I wanted that mossy green. And so I had to name the color Farmstead as well. So I started with Farmstead and then started uh, working the turquoise into it, which is called the Turquoise Trail after a beautiful road which goes behind my beautiful mountains here. It actually goes from I-25, so almost from Albuquerque to Santa Fe through the boonies and ghost towns and whatnot. Really nice, a nice thing to do if you visit our area. Go look for the turquoise trail and drive on that road. It's just really nice. I use 3.5 millimeter needles the way Romy Hill suggests and this is the pattern only in black and white, sorry. And let me toss that. And I started with the green because I wanted to end with the, with the turquoise. You're gonna say, because usually that's the more visible part. So you're gonna say, wait, but you do have green. Yes, this has a story. <laughs> what happened was that this was supposed to be the end of the shawl and I, I mean a few more rows and then cast off, cast off and, but I had like this much yarn left. I didn't weigh it, but probably like 30 grams or so. And so I decided, I, even though she gives instructions on how to change the size of the shawl, I just decided to go my own way and just kept going with the pattern. And so all of this from here on is what I added. 
I thought, hold on. So I thought, well, I'm gonna have this wide lacy section in the turquoise, but then I realized, wait a minute, I'm gonna run out of turquoise much earlier in comparison with the green. So I decided, hey, I'm just gonna put a, add the lace, a part of the lace section in the green as well and then have those stripes and I only eyeballed it. I know you. I could have weighed the yarn and to see how far it's gonna, how much I need for one row. Casting off is always a little more challenging because you need more, but it worked out okay. But I, let me show you the lace and the beautiful, slip stitch pattern which looks essentially like a mesh layer over that green oh that's it just i loved making this so very much and let me show you how much i have left you're gonna laugh that was definitely a yarn chicken i probably could have gotten away with Two more rows of the green. What was I thinking, right? Why did I not use that up? Definitely less turquoise left. And I decided to cast off on the wrong side of the shawl. But my edge, I also did not look at the instructions. I had the turquoise, then one pearl ridge of the green, as you can see. Then I knit it and cast it off. Is it casted or cast? I never know, sorry. Yeah, cast off on the wrong side, like I said. That way I had two turquoise pearl ridges. Yeah, could not be happier about this, I really have to say. And look at the size, it's so generously sized, which I love. Once my wingspan. And then three, wow. It's almost like this has gone since I showed it last time. Yep, very, very happy. And now I can take this marker off and can actually wear it. Then, you know, my mother was here, my mom, I talked about it and she was with me on the German podcast episodes of two of them. And my mother, she's a very, very monogamous knitter. She's... I mean, it really drives her crazy. So she would not, like if she combines two colors, like a solid and a variegated, if she's worried about it not being enough, she would not, you know, like say she would use both colors in two pairs of socks. She wouldn't um, knit two pairs at the same time to see to, for color management reasons. No, she has to do one, finish that and then start the next one. You know how it is with mothers and daughters. I probably would have cast on something while she was still here, but I thought, well, I she's gonna give me grief about that. So I thought, well, whatever, I'm just gonna start something after she leaves, which of course happened and because I had held back before, <laughs> of course I had to cast on two things. And also I was thinking about other things that I could cast on now. Yeah. But before I get into all of that, I wanted to show you the one thing that I also worked on, which is my the fingerless mitts that I am designing right now, or I am not designing them. I am, 
I have designed them, but I am polishing the pattern right now, and I have so much respect for all pattern designers. I think I said that before. In the meantime, I have some friends making these to check my pattern. They have caught a few mistakes. There's also something that I myself decided to change and so there's still it's going to be a little bit a little while before i'm done with this pattern but in the meantime i can show you one mitt without a thumb one of the reasons one of the problems that my testers had was that they said their thumb is too big and i have not as you can see knitted the thumb i just after this started with my second mitt because I wanted to move over the lace section ever so slightly towards the middle of the hand because I realized it's not sitting where it's supposed to sit. So I did that, started the second one right away, and then my testers reported the problem. And I thought, well, I'm just going to finish that second mitt uh, and then I will address the thumb while I'm working on the mitt and probably what I will do is I will not keep increasing as much as I have for the thumb in this first mitt. So both of these are going to be totally different. The lace pattern is sitting slightly over and the thumb is going to be smaller so we'll see where this goes and then there's also the writing corrections to be done which i wonder how designers who you know work on their patterns like continuously all the time how they do it with the sizes if they write i wonder if they write the pattern at first in one size and then add the different numbers because I feel like when I work on this and I do it kind of a, 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 a lot, like for one or two hours, I'm sitting at the computer and uh, typing and going over all my numbers and everything. I feel like I easily make mistakes because at some points, at some point it's almost like all the numbers blur. I, if you know what I mean, you know, I, but so I'm wondering at this point if it would not be easier for the person who writes the pattern to write it for the size that you make as the first model and then to add the other numbers later, even though you might overlook something that you need to put in, but whatever. It's just me thinking loudly. I, um, yeah. I love them and so do my testers luckily they all appreciate the the pattern and they love working on it and I am making these with 2.5 millimeter needles and the yarn that I'm using I am not working in stripes because it looks so, I mean, you can see it looks very stripy, but I'm using a hand spun, a two ply hand spun. It's either a Rambouillet or a Merino. I'm thinking that it's something that I dyed, so it's most likely a local New Mexican Rambouillet. And I just love hand spun yarn. I've talked about that before. For fingerless mitts, I just think that the it's just such a nice thing to look at on your hands and but of course if you make something like this with a lace pattern you have to pay attention that the color doesn't overpower your lace pattern you're going to say wow this is so tiny such a tiny pattern yes it is because in addition to the fine needles the 2.5 millimeters i also I'm a tight knitter, which can cause issues with, with or for people who knit my patterns. So 
I hopefully at some point when this is live on Ravelry, everybody's gonna pay attention closely and choose a size smaller or even go down to two millimeter needles. That's another option. Yep, still enjoying these, just haven't worked on them too, too much the last days. The reason was that the last podcast I recorded, I mean the German version, I recorded in our bedroom. And when I was, I don't know, I just left everything there and thought I was going to record there the English one as well, but I didn't. So in the meantime, everything was there except for one project that I worked on in the last days since my um, accident, let's call it that. And uh, that's a shawl that I cast on because I just wanted to knit with hand spun yarn. And I wanted to start something new and I wanted to, so I was just going through my queue on Ravelry by the way, I am Paper Dag on Ravelry. I am pretty good about updating my um, project page so you can see everything on there. By the way, these guys are also already on there. The name is currently Across the Desert and that's gonna, that, I mean, it's not currently the name, it's gonna stay the name unless somebody else grabs it in the meantime, which I, which I doubt. So across the desert, oh yeah, I need to tell you, I wanna tell you why across the desert. Because I was thinking about all the friends that I have in the knitting community and that, so that this pattern leaves the desert and goes across the desert in all directions into the world to my knitting friends. I love that picture across the desert. So, and like I said, I was then, I was cruising my queue on Ravelry. I have an extensive queue on Ravelry with so many projects that could probably keep 10 knitters busy for the next 20 years, I would think. But it's also just nice. It's my way of using Ravelry when I just want to, you know, kind of like look at things um, like uh, in a magazine. I often look at my friend's activity. That's one thing where I just go through the pages and I see what they made. I see what people have favorited or put in their queue. So that's a nice thing to do. And But the other thing is that when I say, hey, I really want a shawl, I have to look at my shawl patterns, at the shawl patterns in my queue. That's the other thing I do. So I go really, that's more focused. I'm looking at my queue where I have divided up the patterns into the categories like shawls and sweaters, cardigans, shawls, sweaters, cardigans, babies, accessories, toys, something like that. You can go look. So long story short, I had a few that I thought, hmm, I might make this, hmm, I might make this. And then all of a sudden I saw Cowboys and Angels by Isabel Kramer, whom I adore, as you all know, I've talked about it extensively because she's just, she's a designer who comes up with things that seem to work very well for me. Simple, classy, not too, too complicated, and not that I dislike complicated. It's just a look that I like for myself in my clothing and in my accessories. So when I saw this pattern, I thought, this is it. And usually it takes me a moment to think and I compare a few things, but this one I saw and I'm like, I gotta have this, I will cast on right now. And so bought the pattern, cast on, in love, enjoying every stitch. And 
let me show you how far I am. Again, the German, when I recorded the German version, I was way behind, way not as far along as I am right now. I just love this pattern. Comes as a chart and as written instructions in the pattern. You see, this is gonna block out. It's just because it's pulled together a little bit. So that's gonna be fine. And if you've made this, you're gonna say, what? what? There's something missing. There's baubles in the shawl. And shouldn't it be garter stitch? Yes, yes to both. There should be bobbles and there, this whole section should be garter stitch. So I just don't do bobbles. I have done them, yes. I have made the bobbles that um, Isabel has in the A Girl's Best Friend shawl. For this one, I'm like, uh, not this time, not again. Won't do it, sorry. <laughs> So I dropped that part and I also, for some reason, I guess it has something to, to do with how dense this hand spun yarn is that I thought, hmm, I don't really want to do the, this section in garter stitch. I wanted it because it would have densified the pattern, the, 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 the fabric. Is that a word, densified? I hope so. If not. That's okay, you know what I mean, probably, most likely. So, but to still keep it a little bit interesting, I put in garter ridges every, I think seven rows or so. Down here, I messed up and I forgot the garter ridge and I have one more row between the garter ridge and you cannot really tell because the yarn is so irregular anyways. It does not, it's not like, oh my gosh, she messed up there. It doesn't show too badly. The yarn, hand spun by me, again, low and dyed. Again, local Rambouillet, which I love so much. I've also, that's another thing that I've spoken about at length. Rambouillet is a, quite crimp fiber. However, if you buy a commercial, commercially prepared top, it's, I don't know if it's over processed or if it's just that I am used to this not highly processed stuff that I get that I feel like this is so much nicer. Yeah, it's high crimp and you can still see in the spinning top that the crimp is not lost. In fact, I have noticed in, a, in my sweater that I recently finished that um, I, I tried to block out a little bit of length on the bottom and I feel like when I wear that sweater a couple of times, it really goes back together, which I'm sure it's that crimp that does it. Yeah, Rambouillet, local New Mexican Rambouillet, which I have actually picked up from a large Rambouillet farm here in the state of New Mexico where I drove to the farm. Just such a good memory that I have from, I think it was three years ago now. And I have processed, I don't know if this one I had processed at Zeilinger's or if this was some that I had processed locally, but usually when I get the very fine and very delicate um, fiber that where I feel like I want it to be handled very professionally, Zeilinger's is my mill of choice at this point. And Zeilinger's Wool Company in Michigan, by the way. So they, yeah, they're just always 
doing a fantastic job. So this is where I am right now. It was a large amount that I had. So as you can see, green and shades of purple, a little bit of a mustardy yellow. And I have, this is where I am right now. I had three fat skeins or two half skeins and two large skeins. I can't tell you how much was on in them, but this is how much I've left of this one. And this is my last one. I still don't have a feel for how much yarn I will need. I, I'm thinking, I mean, I went through my stash of hand spun yarns and I thought, well, maybe I have something somewhere, but I didn't. However, I found this, which is hand spun merino. Oh my gosh, what bought in 2013? Oh, bought in 2013 and spun two years ago. And rainbow. What? I can't read that, sorry. It's a little bit over two ounces. Oh, yes by K Mohair, K Ranch. And I do remember, kranch.com, I do remember um, this lady had a lot of mohair, hand-dyed mohair locks mainly, and I purchased in towels from her, but a friend of mine said uh, she she wanted to get some more mohair locks and that she did not find the website, which is kind of sad. So apparently she's not doing it anymore. Not sure. Don't. I couldn't swear to it, but I thought this might definitely work if I need it. I am working on this with 4.5 millimeter needles and you can tell probably, you can guess that this is a fast growing project. I've been back to my spinning wheel and thus the wish to knit with hand spun yarn and I have talked about this probably before, but it's a it's something that I like to do. I make these um, small Rolex that I pull from my drum carter. I got an electric strauch. Strauch is the word in German. It's a German name. Um, a drum carter last. April or May, and I've been working with this, still gathering experience by knit, um, carding, blending, and spinning often right away where I've gotten a few small sample skeins. And I feel like, um, of course, I want to eventually add this to my shop, but I still need practice before I do this. However, I did have a custom order by a friend in Germany who ordered what I started calling my, in German, Wüstenwürstchen, and in English, I call them the desert dogs. Do you guess that I like alliterations? So my desert dogs look like this and I sent about three to four ounces no four to five ounces off to Germany and that's about the maximum you I get safely packaged into one box I'll show some pictures but um, I have already started carding 
some new ones which is nice so i can show them to you in real life this is how they look like my desert dogs dogs of course for hot dogs kind of like even though it's spelled differently well all very blue and i will talk a little bit more about spinning after i tell you about the next project that i had cast on but had to end in the meantime i blended very similar colors like this and i was just going and i thought oh this is beautiful wouldn't it be wonderful to have a cardigan like this yes i'm gonna do it i jumped right in i carded the wool i spun it up in two days <laughs> yes i did i spun one sample i mean i carded a sample i spun a sample i spun i carded more carded everything i had especially of the blue it was slightly different from this and then i spun the spun the sample spun the the, the whole amount of yarn that i had without ever measuring weighing anything but I, I picked, I went, I had gone through my queue again on Ravelry, my cardigans, I thought, yeah, cardigan, warm cardigan would be nice. Something blue, which I don't have because the blue that I had had mohair in it. I made that a long time ago. Miss Maple, Miss, the Miss Maple cardigan. It's still on Ravelry also on my project page if you are interested but I had to gift it to a friend I mean I gifted it to a friend because I just never wore it because mohair itches me so this time I picked the Myrta by Katrin Schneider who's a German designer as far as I know and she yeah she but this is an English pattern. So if this is something that you like, this is a lovely, a lovely pattern. And on the back, the cardigan is in stock in it, which I also liked. So I had my wool, I had my little sample and I started, I made a swatch with, I, which I then frogged when I realized, hey, this is crazy. I get exact gauge with 3.5 millimeter needles. I frogged the swatch. I started the cardigan and while I, which is something that, I mean, you can't, I started the cardigan. Let me sort my thoughts how this happened. And at the same time, I started spinning. And it was more like in the evenings, I when we watch some, something on television, I, I knit and maybe earlier in the day, I spin. And now I gotta show you this yarn. So you know why I was so excited about this yarn and why I so badly wanted a cardigan like this is this not the most beautiful yarn that you have ever seen look at all the colors in there no i'm i'm sorry <laughs> i know if you don't like blue you're gonna be like hmm, what 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 the most beautiful yarn what is she talking about but i just love it so very much Well, so this was the rest of my very first sample. And long story short, this is how much yard I have. And it's just not enough. It is just not enough. Big sigh. I need 
according to the pattern about 1,400 yards. I went up a needle size and I think I may try next time when I spin this even to go up another needle size because the knitters in my knitting group where we met in the valley a week ago today they said hmm, this is kind of a dense fabric i must say for a cardigan i do like dense but i could try going yet again one needle size up i think i just love this so much because i got gauge <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah, I am with the new, with the second go, and now we're going straight into spinning with my second try for yarn for this cardigan. I have been a very good girl and a very good spinner. I have found another ball of a blue alpaca and it's not really visible but when you had the the alpaca roving next to each other to, to, it, you could clearly see that it was more a very different a quite not very very but a quite different blue this one is more of a, a sky blue, whereas the other one was more of a turquoise. And that's the one that went into this first batch. I portioned, I, how did I do this? Oh, let me think. So I portioned the blue alpaca then i carded one bat and weighed it i weighed the blue and i weighed the colors the other colors that i put in and i used three braids one was a mystery fiber where the mill blends in all kinds of stuff the other one, the other two were Ramboulets. Probably processed at different times and maybe even by different mills. I think one was processed in Michigan and one was processed in uh, New Mexico. You can see I'm not really paying attention to what I use from the ramole fibers from the wool fibers so it even shines through a little bit and some have a lot more of that dark pink this has a mustard in it and this has obviously quite a bit of green and uh, this comes because the, the roving for the non-spinners of you, you have the roving or the spinning top, you have it, it comes in this long, thick shape. So, and then it's dyed usually in sequences. So you have, let's say, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red. Often, that's how I dye most of the times. And uh, so if I rip off a certain distance, I may have only green, blue, but next time I have red and green in the next section. And that's where I'm not paying attention as well as when I spin, I will not pay attention to how I sort them. So I may have two of these guys next to each other that have a lot of pink, then maybe I have three that have a lot of green. Doesn't matter, I want this random factor when I spin it. Another very interesting thing in regards to my desert dogs is that 
the alpaca that sits on the outside is a shorter fiber. And also, alpaca does not have the memory and it is not that elastic and doesn't have that springiness that wool has. And that's why I think it's going to be very nice to combine it with the Rambouillet. The way you spin these, by the way, if you are not a spinner, you may not know this, is that you pull from here and feed into the wheel. You can spin it with a forward draw like this. What I usually do is I spin with a long backward draw where I pinch um, the yarn and then let do this motion. Yeah, I, I don't know. Let me know if you're interested in a little bit more of a detailed video about how I spin these. I'd love to do that because I'm so much into this right now. So I pull these off the drum carter and put them into this shape right away. And I get about four per run. However, you would think you would think that this is a quick thing to do. It's not. I'm so glad that I have an electric dump carter because I it sure takes a lot of time even to just prep the fibers because you can't just toss them on but you fluff them up and I will show you some fibers where I really had to do that in a moment but before that I want to show you some of those mini test skeins the way I do them and these will probably all go into the hap which I will get back to very soon. If you don't know, this is the Hansel hat that I've um, started working on a little while ago and that I did not, that I haven't worked on in, <clears throat> excuse me, in a while. <laughs> Showing you these reminds me to tell you a little bit more about how these are done. Here, I told you, I put the blue on the, on the, uh, as a bottom layer on the drum carter. And then as I roll the desert dogs or the roll legs off the drum carter, that is the dominant color that shows. A lot of times I also do the same technique, but I use a different solid color. Often I use a natural color like I have some beautiful gray Shetland fiber and um, as I said I had I prepared some some of these for an order that went to Germany and that's where I used Shetland fibers because the woman who ordered them was a beginner and I did not want her to deal with the shorter fibers that are on the outside of this. So while I did put in some blue, as you can see on the test skein, there's also a lot of gray-brown Shetland, which has a longer staple length because there's nothing more frustrating than for a beginner spinner to spin and your yarn breaks all the time. So I, I carded a bit for her and then I test spun it to make sure if I could imagine that it was suitable for a beginner. And I found it very wonderful and easy to work with. And in the meantime, meantime she has spun it up or some of it and she really enjoyed it, which made me very happy. Then these guys, this was just some junk that I pulled off the carter when I cleaned it, which is still very beautiful. I didn't even weigh these guys. Oh yeah, I did. 16 grams, 40 yards. And this is, I have it somewhere. Oh yeah, also 16 grams, 36 yards. 
And then I have this one where I put in some silk as well. And oh yes, this was also a first test for the cardigan, but I thought that was too much pink and purple for me and I wanted, I realized from this, when I saw this, that I wanted more green and more shades of blue and that's what I did for this and in the skeins that I showed you. But of course it's still beautiful and let me show you all three of them. I just can't get so excited about these as you may be able to tell. I can talk about these for an hour straight and how much I love them. <laughs> Look at all these colors. It's so great. And especially this one, it's just something where I'm like, wow, check it out. This is like my desert. And it's a little bit like the, the new color that I came up with last year where I'm like, oh, this is like the desert. It's muted. And from a distance you think, oh, this is just gray. And then you look closely and you see, bam, all these beautiful colors and the variation. You just have to look closely to see the magic. Yeah. Love it. Okay, enough of this. I have been spinning even more and I finally picked up the bats that I got from my friend Sherry and um, I still wanna thank her, Sherry, thank you so much. Sherry cards bats for her business, which is called Twisted Dye Kitchen. Oh, sorry, I got the, I connected these so I would remember that they're from the same batch. This is her card, and you can find her fluff, her beautiful work on Etsy. And in this case, I got from her two ginormous bats that each, each had four ounces. Incredible. I can't get that much on my drum carter. <clears throat> and she put in 18 micron merino and cashmere and tessa silk and angelina. And they turned out gorgeous. Check it out. I have gotten from one bat 186 yards and the other one 226. I have no idea why I have such different yardage. Same amount. Each one weighs four ounces. I don't know. Not quite sure. But I, it's not going to be a problem. If I make a shawl out of this, which I'm thinking that might be a good idea, something just rustic and hefty, like the like this. I can't even want to do this again. You know me. I love do, doing things in several versions. So if the yardage is not enough, then I can still combine it with a different color. Look at these bits of orange and white in there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so much fun. Yeah, so many colors in here. Wow, it's so... I know I've been spinning on this partially in the evenings, in the dark, and you're like, oh yeah, that's nice, beautiful pink. And, but yet again, In the daylight. Wow. Look at everything that's in here. It's just fantastic. I wonder what the white is. Sherry, tell me. It felt like the, maybe the white is the cashmere. I don't know. Yeah. Very happy with these. And I can't wait to find the perfect project. That is this. 
Then, this is not the end of the spinning section, still not. And most of the rest happened in the past week or so. I need to lean back a little bit and go a little bit more into detail. So I purchased from someone who de-stashed a, just a bag full of fibers. The fibers were scoured, so cleaned, already degreased for you non-spinners, and they were dyed but not carded, not prepared for spinning. And I thought, well, I have this fancy, wonderful drum carder. I'm just going to card them into bats and spin them uh, for myself because I feel like I need to get experience. Like I said, I told you before, I need to get more experience with this whole process. So I, and I have a little bit left, and I have a cat in this box, lying in this box, which is fine because all of this is for me. Normally, no cats allowed in fiber that's for sale. So this is the fluff that I have left. This is how it looked like. I mean, I wish honestly that you could feel this. This is as soft as a cloud. And I just, when you looked at it and you saw there was orange, there was red, there was blue, there was green in it. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a wonderful mix of colors when I blend these on the drum carter. What happened was I got carried away and I made a rookie mistake and I threw it all in. You have to make at least two passes with the drum carter. One pass does not really totally make it fine enough for spinning. I did my second pass and I realized what my mistake was. All the fibers are so thoroughly blended that you get brown, a brown bat. I was so frustrated. And the reason is that this is really different from this because here I work with spinning top that has already been prepared. Whereas here I have the, the raw fiber. I call it the raw fiber, even though it's not really, it has no like I said, it has been washed and removed the lanolin already, but it's just really different. And when you combine all the colors from this, you really, it's all blended and it gets brown. Also, I wanted to spin this from the bat, which even more makes it brown in the result of the yarn. Or so I thought. With this, you see, you spin these, you have the dominant color, you spin these short sections from here, and maybe you have green, then blue, then red, and you spin the blue with the green, the blue with the red, the blue with, with the next color. You know, it's kind of a little more defined, whereas, and I'm sorry, now I don't have a bat because I spun it all up but most likely you know how a bat looks like. You have a rectangle where the fibers are lined up and you strip off a section from this fluffy cloud and you spin from the tip lengthwise. So you have this length of fiber, of lined up fibers and so you spin them at the same time. You see what I mean? That what the difference is? You spin those green, red, blue, yellow, all of them at the same time, and that's what makes it brown. As I spun, I will show you what happened. Hold on. 
first I do need to tell you that of course when I realized that I made that mistake and that it's not going to work out the way I thought the way I, it does with the desert dogs then I um, of course changed my the way I approached this uh, fiber and I did uh, I, I tried to do stick a little bit more with the color so i made bats that were a little more green other bats that were a little more blue and so forth and that worked out okay and i did decide to spin them all into one yarn combine everything and have kind of like this subtle variation in the color and the subtle brown variation to have green brown with blue brown and red brown and um, <laughs> what happened was that was also white in it too by the way and it was a very long process of spinning this because it just drafted incredibly beautifully and fine according to um you could expect with this fiber it was a very it's a very fine fiber it's very soft it's most likely local and i would imagine that it it, it could be rambouille also but i don't i'm not experienced enough to know enough about what's available in in new mexico i mean i may be completely wrong who knows but I, after carding a lot, I'm, I still haven't carded everything, I spun it and I spun and spun and spun. I spun finally and I thought last night, well, I'm going to finish my spinning and then I'm going to apply it. Usually plying is fast and um, done. You know, you, you spin and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to ply and you, it's like a half hour, hour, I don't know. In this case, not so much. I underestimated how fine this is, I think. And But without further ado, let me show you my skin. It is not washed yet. That's why it still has a few kinks. It's also not wound very, very well. It has, it's kind of irregular. It was irregular in the tension. It doesn't matter. That's why it looks a little wonky. But I am ecstatic about this, as I always am. <laughs> Can you tell? I love this so much. So, you see, my I was again in, a, in my dark, artificially lighted uh, studio where I worked on the bats. And yes, it was very brown, but in the resulting yarn, you still have a lot of variation, especially because I then changed my approach as soon as I realized my mistake and I tried to, you know, kind of enforce the individual colors more per bat. I cannot tell you how much uh, I, how much this weighs. I haven't weighed it yet, but I know I have about 650 to 700 yards i it may of course due to the crimp of the yarn still go together and give me less yardage and it's definitely a light fingering and i am thinking i would very much love to make a lace shawl with this so i can't wait to get this started i finished plying this morning so my foot, my burned foot, was is totally fine with doing something like this. I'm just barefoot the whole time. And um, thank God for radiant heat or it would be freezing probably. 
so but um, yeah but motion totally fine the, the the burn is very close to my big toe so I just can't put any shoes on yeah that's what I have yes very happy with this super excited about it there are bits so I wonder what changes so here this is in my experience still something where I'm thinking oh is this going to change if I when I make a third pass with the drum carter which I did not do I still have sometimes these small bits and bobs where either it was a second cut there's hardly any VM in the in the fiber from the get-go so that's really nice no bits and pieces of grass but then I have the occasional irregularity like this where it's a little it's probably a second cut or maybe sometimes where it's not carded super perfectly not sure or something like this but I sometimes I picked it out and sometimes I left it in I think I won't mind when I work with this I'll see Yep, very excited. It's probably about four, five ounces. Yep, and I, like I said, I still have quite a bit of this. All of this, all of it is dark, but then I also have, hmm, poor cat, yes tough life hard life pulling out this from under him this is some not this I don't know what this is I also have this which is some of my early scoured fiber which I purchased last month May at Maryland not in Maryland, wishful thinking at Albuquerque Fire Arts Fiesta. And I'm thinking that I might blend it with the, the dyed up stuff. I think I would like that. That would give me a nice dark, nice dark yarn with these subtle colors. In it, probably just a good amount altogether. Ah, so many things to explore. But um, first, the the blue yarn for the cardigan is going to be next. So this is the first test batch that I carded, and now that I spun the fine yarn. It's off the wheel, so I can do a test run with this and also knit a little sample and see if I do the same yarn as before or if I maybe spin finer. I don't know. I'll see. So much about spinning, so much fun happening in that regard, but I was also... As you can imagine, and as you know, I pulled out more things as I was going through my Ravelry queue. I brought a sweater pattern, which I like very much, just to show you for inspiration, because I think it's just so classy and cute and you know kind of like a wardrobe staple piece possibly i think the original pattern in the original pattern she must hold her yarn with mohair which again doesn't work for me so uh yeah i will have to to figure out something else for myself when I'm ready to make this 
I am currently very much thinking about casting on a sweater by Vera Ballymackie, which I want to say it's the pure joy. It's the one that has the cool cable, uh, not cable, stripe uh, pattern here and such a cool construction. So I'm already kind of thinking about yarn because I, my yarns, because I don't want to, I just want a garment next also. That's that. Then I thought about, well, I thought, well, I'm going to Winslow to a knitting retreat in February. That's what I'm dying for a lot these days, mainly, actually. Also because they were so nice to ask me again. Oh, I'm not giving away a secret. No, I can't. Well, go away, you people who go to Winslow, but I'm going to do the goodie bag yarn. Shh. Okay. So, I am dying for Winslow. I'm dying to go to Winslow. <laughs> and um, so last year, this is what we had in the goodie bag. And because I'm lucky in regard to my husband not being a knitter and him gifting me his yarn. I have two of this, which are 100% bamboo by Theodora's Pearls. And it's called the Turquoise Room, which after the Turquoise Room at the hotel where we stay at. I was going through my queue. I already got super excited. I will make the bark lines and I will knit on my shawl when I'm in Winslow. So perfect. And my yardage. Oh, it's not enough. I don't get enough yardage. So now I'm still thinking about what I would, so I'm still not decided what to make with this and I'm really sad because I thought I had it figured out. I thought I thought I possibly could also use these combined two colors which are both hand spun. I think this I think this is dyed by me and this is a 50/50 merino and silk by Redfish Dye Works. I just love their fibers and I always buy this when they're in Albuquerque. The 50-50 Merino silk. It's just wonderful. I got some in shades of blue already from this year that I still need to spin up. And yeah, but I don't know the yardage of these. I'm my bookkeeping. I gotta fire my bookkeeper because she didn't keep track of this. I don't even know what this is, but it definitely has silk. But then I also, I went through my stash and I found this beauty. You see a theme? <laughs> I felt so in love with this sweater. I found it in a thrift store. I love the color. And then I realized when I found this in stash, I thought, wow, this is exactly that yellow. Beautiful, a lace yarn. So I'm thinking this is coming when I have finished the other lace project that's on my needles, the Mary Stem shawl, which I will work on when we go to Winslow. And because I love this color so much, I thought the other day, I will have to try to recreate this. And I dyed it on my spirit lace yarn, which has all kinds of wonderful fibers in it, like alpaca and cashmere. And I think I nailed it pretty much. It has light spots, like off white, on purpose so and this beautiful yellow and now we have come to the end of this podcast I want to thank you very much for joining me and all my chatter about my knitting and my spinning thank you for being here with me 
I am looking already forward to the next time. And until then, I wish you happy knitting. Bye.